Develop the ability to share. And sharing now can become a major part of your life process and life progress. Sharing is a unique human capacity. Everybody has the ability to share. How much you share, of course, is a matter of attitude and the personal conclusions you've come to about your life and what to do about it. But sharing is unique. Here's what's unique about sharing. The more you give, the more you become. It's one of the paradoxes of life. You give away, but you become bigger. It would look like if you would share, you'd become less, but see, that's not true. It's one of those unique life processes. It's like one of those questions you ask, well, you have your first child, you love it dearly. You say, well, if I have another child, do I have to divide my love in half? And the answer is surprisingly no. From somewhere comes this unbelievable capacity to love the other one as much as you did the first one. What if you have three, four, five children? Now, are each one of them going to get less and less and less the capacity of your ability to love and care? And the answer is, strangely, no. As the demand and the opportunity increases, it seems as though your capacity grows. And what you give away seems to multiply. It's one of the mysteries and the uniqueness of life. So sharing makes you bigger. Now here's one of the reasons to share. Share on purpose so that you become bigger, not only for the effect that it will have on other people, but for the effect it will have on you. See, what we want to learn to be is intelligently selfish. The golden rule is a way to be intelligently selfish. The golden rule says, if you want this big flow coming from lots of people, nothing wrong with that. But if you want this big flow coming from lots of people, here's what you must do. Here's the formula. Now that's sort of being intelligently selfish, isn't it? This big flow of awareness and love and, and profit and uniqueness coming from lots of people, that's a bit selfish, but it says, the golden rule says, here's how you get it. It says, what, first three words? Do for others. See, that's how you get this big flow coming your way. And the more you do for more, the bigger the flow. That's called how to be intelligently selfish. The guy says, well, about the best I can do is take care of myself. Well, that's a poor man talking. Always will be poor poor in spirit and poor in money and poor every other way. If you just take care of yourself, you will be limited in every respect. The master teacher said, here's the key to wealth and fortune. He who wishes to be great, the greatest, Muhammad Ali notwithstanding. <laughs> he who wishes to be the greatest, whether it's in wealth or awareness or uniqueness or response or results, Here's the key to wealth, master teacher said. Find a way to become a servant of many. That's the key to greatness. Finding a way to become a servant of many. See, the best way to cure your own bills is to be concerned about other people's bills. The best way to get your own car notes paid is to worry about other people's car notes, not yours. If you worry about yours, it'll be hard to pay. Worry about others, it'll be easy to pay. See, when you get concerned for other people, what can I do to help you and help you and help you and help you? The more people I help, the more return I get, even if it's only a small percentage. People say, well, I'm grateful here. Thanks for helping me here. You just can't believe. One of my friends, went to a, another one of our mutual wealthy friends and said, I've got a project. William, his name was William, said, William, 
If I put this project together and it creates four million dollars for you, will you give me one? If I put this together and it creates for you four million dollars, will you give me one? Guess what he said? Yes. If you put this together and it creates for me four million, I'll be happy to give you one. I'll be satisfied with three. See, that's part of the unique life process. If you help other people, guess what they will do? Share back with you. It's one of those inevitables. Now, once in a while, somebody's mean and greedy and upsets this process, but there's not enough of them to make a difference. Incredible. One of my dear friends now, Wayne Barnes. Wayne is 32 years old. I guess he's about 33 years old now. He's a multimillionaire. He lives in uh, Phoenix. He's a builder, commercial builder. Has this beautiful home on the side of Camelback, Camelback Mountain. Cost 1.3 million. Wayne Barnes attended my seminar 13 years ago in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was just a young kid, 20 years old, had just gotten married. He and Rosie come to the seminar. Wayne gets all excited, takes all these notes, and he comes up to me after the seminar and says, Mr. Owen, my name is Wayne Barnes. He said, uh, I'll tell you what, he said, I'm excited about all this. He said, I've never heard about this before. He said, I'm going to start setting my goals, changing my life, get my library started. I said, Wayne, nice to meet you. I hope you will. He said, I will. He said, by the way, where's your next seminar? I said, uh, Denver. He said, I'll see you in Denver. Follows me to Denver, to the next <laughs> seminar. He comes this time with his tape recorder, tapes it. That was back before we had the cassette tape program going. And took some more notes. Him and Rosie are there saying, this is really the greatest stuff. And he comes up to me and he says, remember me? I said, yeah, Wayne, I remember you. He said, this is great stuff. He said, I tell you what. He said, I'm going to get rich, change my life. I'm going to help a lot of people. And he's just bubbling and going. He said, where's your next seminar? <laughs> I said, Phoenix. He said, I'll be there. He follows me to Phoenix. Sits there again, takes some more notes, this third seminar. Well, to make a long story short, Wayne Barnes is now a multimillionaire. And uh, he's done extremely well. And he's become one of my very, very dear friends. Wayne probably has one of the finest libraries in the world that I know of especially somebody that age, 33 years old. Uh, he got the book, Think and Grow Rich. He got his journal started. I mean, he did everything, just followed everything. You know, you just once in a while find somebody that just does everything. That's what I did when I met Show. Tell me when to get up. Tell me when to go to bed. Right? Tell me what to do. I mean, my plan hasn't been working. I'm willing to follow yours right to the detail, whatever. And Wayne Barnes was one of those people that just did it all and now he's wealthy uh, when he was building his home uh, just before he had it finished just about finished he took me up on the third floor takes me on a tour through his home and he said uh, Jim he said I can't believe it I've become wealthy he said we've done well haven't we the last 10 12 years I said we sure have one he said uh, I got to thank you for all of this he said by the way I got to show you something he shows me this unique looking room up on the third floor overlooking the city. He said, how do you like the view from here? I said, it's spectacular. He said, how do you like this room? I said, it's fabulous. He said, do you like the way it's furnished? I said, it's unusual. <laughs> he said, uh, well, he said, you might like to know that's your room. He said, whenever you come to Phoenix, now here's where you got to stay. You got to stay with me. He said, uh, I just want to show my gratitude for all the stuff I've learned, now I'm wealthy, and, and I got you now a place in my house, up on the third floor, specially furnished. So see, that's part of the reward of sharing. I got me a room in <laughs> Phoenix, right? I'm telling you, if, you're sh if you'll share, you'll get you a room. And that's not the end of the story. I got, in fact, I just got a card. I wonder if I put it in here somewhere. I just got a card from Wayne Barnes. It says, Dear Jim, I called you when I was in town in late April. 
We just sailed from Jamaica to the Bahamas, and next is Nassau. Will you join us soon? Wayne calls me a few months ago to come down to the Balboa Bay Club. And when I get down there, he said, I got to show you something. I said, Wayne, what have you got now? He said, you got to see my ship. <laughs> Unbelievable. He walks me out on this 73-foot sailing schooner. And this is the picture of it right here, called Windhaven. It's a famous 73-foot catch, neat ship. And uh, he said, I've, I've, I've got me a sailing ship. I said, what are you going to do with this thing, right? There's not much water around Phoenix, right? <laughs> no, no, he said. He said, Rosie and I have got the bug about sailing. And he said, we've got us a captain. We've hired us a captain. I said, incredible. So he finds his captain and introduces him to me. Oars was his name, which I thought was a good name for a captain. <laughs> Oars. I said, Wayne, what are you going to do? He said, look, Rosie and I and the two kids, we're going to take off a couple of years and we're going to sail around the world. He said, you talk to me about lifestyle and said, uh, this is just part of our lifestyle. And he said, I want you to join us. Do a little sailing with us in the next couple of years. So I promised him I would. So he shows me the ship. And as we go through, he shows me the all the furnishings and everything, right? And then he shows me this room. <laughs> he says, how do you like this room? I said, it's fabulous. Do you like what's in it? I said, it's fabulous. He said, that's your room. So I got me a room on a ship. <laughs> how lucky can you get? See, if you will share, no telling what will come back your way if you'll share. Be concerned about helping somebody else with their language and help them with their lifestyle and help them with their philosophical conclusions. Help them with learning better the taste of life and the uniqueness of life. Help them with their financial plan. Ask a few questions. Wayne Barnes is one of those people who shares. Wayne gives away the book Think and Grow Rich and As a Man Thinketh. Now that I've got mine, I'm sure He'll probably give mine away. But he buys them by the box. As a man thinketh and think and grow rich. He buys them by the box. And every, every person he meets that he takes a liking to, he says, hey, I got a book for you. And he writes a little note in it and hands it to him. And now there must be thousands of these books circulating around that Wayne Barnes has given away. Part of his way of just sharing, part of his way of passing along um, something that he's come into possession with with that he thought was valuable. But see, that's what can happen to you if you share, if you share. What all of us want to do in consciousness and awareness is become bigger. Okay. This cup will not hold a gallon, why? It's too small. What if you poured a gallon all around this cup? See, it still will only hold this much because it's too small. Now, see, some people are so small in their thinking and their awareness, you could pour happiness all around them. They're not going to get any. <laughs> They're too little in their thinking and their awareness and their acceptance. It doesn't matter how much happiness is available. They're not going to get very much. And you're not going to get very much happiness out of the next experience if you don't grow, if you don't expand. And one of the best ways to expand in your consciousness is by sharing. Touch somebody else's life. Touch somebody else's experience. Give somebody else some information, right? Pass along a book or a recommendation or, you know, share what you've got. And sure enough, your capacity grows and grows and grows. Now when joy is passed out, you get three times as much as you used to. And somebody wonders, how come you're happier now this year than you were last year? And it's simply because you're growing. You know, happiness is always available, but you can only have what you can hold. Prosperity is always available, but you can only keep what you can hold. So what you want to do is create this capacity, this awareness, this growth experience, so that when joy and happiness and prosperity and unique things are passed out, you get to hold more. Now, you must also understand that you can also hold more sadness. But sadness is a life experience. 
You can hold more disappointment, but disappointment is a life experience. But see, now with the depth of awareness and understanding, you hold it and it becomes not bitter, but it becomes commodity. It becomes experience. It becomes valuable. So that when you talk to the next person that's going through some difficult times, you can reach them with your experience because you've been there. You've tasted it. So we all want to grow in our awareness and taste and capacity. Sharing. A major thing to do when this weekend is over is deliberately figure ways to share. Now, there's a lot of things to share. Share your money. Share your time. Share your knowledge. Share your feelings. Don't be afraid to share those. That kind of sharing has incredible value. And people who share with us, see what great value that is. My daughters and I are very close. Linda, especially, she calls me just constantly. She was gonna take a trip. She said, Daddy, I wanted to call you in case I didn't get to call in the next two or three days. Uh, just to tell you that you happen to be talking to your greatest fan. She says, have you gotten any applause lately? I said, well, I don't know. She says, well, here's some applause. And on the telephone, she's going like this. She said, just remember that when you take your next trip. You have somebody who cares. And remember the applause. And I love you dearly. Just the words and the actions and the sharing and the capacity. See, that's what fills your cup. That's what gives you this incredible uniqueness of living, knowing what it's like to be human in all respects. People who share, incredible. Then one of the most important things to share is your philosophy. Your perception of life is bound to help somebody. If you show somebody your viewpoint, your vantage point, sure enough, it's gonna be revealing to somebody else. You say, well, here's what I've been thinking about life and about activity and about money and about commerce and about lifestyle. Here's what I'm thinking. If you will share that with somebody, sure enough, somebody's gonna come back and say, remember that breakfast we had, the lunch we had, or when we got together that day three or four months ago and you talked about those things? I've never forgotten that. In fact, I've started to make changes in my life already. You can't believe the feedback you'll get. Because see, part of the return is not just a room or some money or some percentages. Part of it is the thanks. One of the reasons I do what I do is for the letters and the stories and the people who come back and say, let me tell you what's happening to me. I'm using this stuff and it's changing my life. See, that's heavy. You can't buy that with money. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. You can only buy it by sharing. You can only earn it, rather, by sharing. And I go for that. I go for the stories. I probably get as much joy out of other people's success as I do my own. The stories you'll come back and share with me or the letters you write or the contact you make and say, here's what's happening to me. I'll be just as excited about that as I will my own success and what's happening to me. I revel in that. I take great joy in it. One of the reasons I do what I do for that kind of experience of people who say, what you said made a difference for me. See, that's awesome. And guess how many of us can share our ideas? Everybody. You don't have to have a class of 200. You don't have to have a seminar of 1,000. Start with one. That's the way I started, awkwardly, with one. Let me tell you when I gave my first goal seminar. When I was 25 years old, I met Mr. Schof. One morning at breakfast, he asked me, let me see your current list of goals. Remember that story in the evening seminar? So he gave me this little formula on goals. Work on your goals, write them down, you right? Consider the size and what kinds of goals so that they will affect you properly. He gave me this little goal formula that morning at breakfast. Guess when I shared it? At lunch. 
I got a hold of Charlie Garrett. I said, Charlie, let's have lunch. Charlie was a good friend of mine. We had a couple of projects going together. I said, Charlie, I've met this man. Let me tell you what's happening to me. He gave me this little formula for setting goals. I've never heard it before. I'm gonna change my whole life. I get together with Charlie and I show him all this. I said, Charlie, write this down, write this down, write this down. <laughs> Let me show you what the man showed me. I said, I'm gonna use it to change my life. And why don't we do it together? Let's do it together. You've been a clod just like me, <laughs> right? <laughs> As I recall now, that was my first attack, right? <laughs> I said, hey, we've been poor together. We've been just, you know, knocking around together. Said, now it's time, let's get rich together. Charlie said, wow, that looks interesting. That was really when I first shared it, was the day I heard it, I passed it along. It wasn't a seminar of a thousand people, it was Charlie Garrett. And Charlie was a little startled by my enthusiasm and my excitement, but uh, at least I shared it. So just share, you can't believe what'll happen as far as your life and your lifestyle, if you'll share. Okay. Here's the last subject under personal development. But it's one of the most important. It's called lifestyle. One of the major projects to work on is how to get joy from your substance. Lifestyle is figuring out ways to be unique. And see, uniqueness is that great challenge of taking what you've got and getting pleasure, joy from it. Getting experience from it. See, some people have money, but they don't even know how to spend it. At least they don't know how to spend it for joy. And remember, it's not the amount that counts, it's the plan that counts, it's the thinking that counts. A father wads up a $5 bill, throws it at his son and says, here, take the darn stuff if you need it that bad. <laughs> See, same $5, right? Same $5, only instead of being dispensed with joy, it's dispensed with animosity. Now the father gets no joy from the five dollars by wadding it up and throwing it. See, that's not how you get joy from it. It's the same money, but it depends on how you spend it. It depends on how you give it. And how you give it is called lifestyle. And Shof taught me lifestyle in the simplest little way. Shof taught me how to be a two-quarter person. So I didn't understand what that meant. He said, well, let's say you're getting your shoe shined. And the shoe shining boy's done a great job. And he's whistled and talked and kept you entertained. And you look down, you got one of the world's great shines. So you reach in your pocket and you pay him. Now, after you've paid him, you reach in your pocket and get a handful of change. And the thought occurs to you, shall I give him one quarter or two quarters for a tip for my fabulous shine? Shof said, here's lifestyle. If two amounts pop in your mind for giving, like one quarter or two quarters, Shof said, always go for the higher amount. He said, become a two quarter person. I said, well, what difference would that make? He said, all the difference in the world, being a one quarter person versus a two quarter person. Now you got one quarter or two quarters, so it's not the amount that's gonna be the problem. The problem is how you spend it. See, that was unique. He said, if you're thinking two quarters, look at my shine, I better go for two quarters. And they say, well, no, I'll just give him one. He said, that will affect you the rest of the day. It'll bother you. Sure enough, right in the middle of the day, you'll look down, see your shine and say, I got to be cheap. One lousy quarter. <laughs> he said, it'll affect you. But he said, if you go for the two quarters, he said, that'll affect you the rest of the day. You'll be happier. Shof said, you cannot believe the good feelings you can buy for just a quarter. See, I didn't understand that. Then I learned it's not the amount. 
It's the thought. It's the idea. Become a two-quarter person. Shelf taught me what the word tip meant. So I didn't understand. I'm from farm country, Idaho. What do I know about tip, right? He says, do you know what tip means? T-I-P. Comes from a phrase. What is it? To ensure promptness. Shelf said tip means to ensure promptness. Now, he said, if that's true, if tip is to ensure promptness, when should you give it? Up front. See, I didn't know that. He said, sophisticated people always ensure good service. They don't take a chance. I thought, wow, what a way to live. I always thought, well, you waited till the meal was over, see whether or not you got good service, and then tip. He said, no, 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 not sophisticated people. You don't wait and see. You ensure. Wow. Makes all the difference in the world, right? You're taking a couple of people to lunch, right? And you calculate, let's see, the tip will be about so much, right? You call Mary over and say, Mary, right? Arm around the shoulder, Mary, here's $10. Would you take good care of me and my friends? You won't believe the (laughs) service. They do what's known as hover. I mean, they hover (laughs) right around your table. Otherwise, you can never find them. I mean, where's my waitress? Where's my waitress? All the difference in the world. Same money, see? But it's called giving it up front instead of behind. Now, it doesn't mean you can do it every time, but it means you just think, 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 think of ways to be unique. Think of ways, right? It works wonders. I took a neat lady, oh, this has been a couple of years ago. We went to the Beverly Hilton Hotel to the uh, Trader Vic's restaurant close by where I used to live. And uh, we're all excited about about going to Trader Vic's, Beverly Hills, nice place for to entertain. And uh, when we get there, we drive up in front of Trader Vic's, and two attendants come out. One opens one door, one opens the other door, and they let out my lady friend. The other gentleman lets me out. Says, "Mr. Roan, nice to have you here." And uh, my lady's already impressed. (laughs) He said, have a good meal. I said, we certainly will. So we leave, right, go into the restaurant, have this fabulous meal. When we come out of Trader Vic's, as we walk out the door, there is my car sitting right there. (laughs) Both doors are open, and the motor is running. (laughs) My lady can't believe it. She said, I've never seen service like this. I said, hey, this is really great. (laughs) So one attendant lets my lady friend in, right? On the other side, another one lets me in. They close the doors. Says, Mr. Owen, it's been nice to have you here. Have a nice evening. I say, thank you very much. And I drive away. When we get to about the first light, down on uh, Wilshire Boulevard. My lady friend looks over at me. She says, Jim, hold it just a minute. I said, what is it? She said, I just thought of something. I said, what's that? She said, you forgot to to tip them at Trader Vic's. After all that service, you didn't give them any money. I said, hey, look, it'll be okay. She said, no, 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 we got to go back. (laughs) We got to go back, go back. I said, hey, take my word for it. It's okay, it's okay. She said, no, 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 we got to go back. I mean, we're not going any further. You got to, for that kind of service, you got to tip the money. And then I had to tell her (laughs) that I made my first trip to Trader Vic's that morning. (laughs) Incredible. (laughs) Lifestyle. Somebody once said, money takes no right out of the English language. (laughs) 
If money is no problem, would you? Yes. <laughs> you don't even have to go any further. But it doesn't take that much. You don't really have to be wealthy. All you have to be is smart. Smart, intelligence. Intellect is the measure of value. It is said the saints lived simply, not because they were holier, but because they were smarter. Could be they were wiser. The simple things of life can many times be the most valuable. Lifestyle, learning how to spend your money, learning what to do with it, anticipating versus waiting till the last minute. It's called lifestyle. A man in Detroit, Michigan, came to the seminar many years ago. Decided he was going to change his whole life. He said, Mr. Owen, I, I got some major changes to make. And he said, you're going to be happy with my progress. I said, I don't doubt that. And sure enough, when I came back, a few months later, he already told me some neat stories. He said, one is, I've just been living this narrow life. He said, I've got two teenage daughters. And he said, uh, it just hasn't been going that well. And he said, I can now see some of the major problems. And he said, I've been causing them. He said, let me tell you one little story. He said, my daughters like to go to the, some of the rock and roll concerts, right? And he said, sure enough, when it comes time for one of these big concerts to come to town, you know, my daughters come and they beg and they do all kinds of things to try, you know, finally get a couple of dollars out of me so they can go attend the concert. And he said, I give them all these lectures and reluctantly, finally, I part with my money and say, well, okay, if you insist, here's the money, but I hope there's not another one in a long time. He said, that, he said that's the way I operated. Reluctantly. He said, most of the time, I even made him beg. And he said, now I can see that's not the way to live. And then he told me the story. After he decided to change his life and change his whole lifestyle and his procedure, he said, I'm going through the paper one day and I found out one of the rock concerts is coming to town and it's one of the, my girl's favorite rock stars coming to town. So he said, now with my new life in view, he said, I go down and buy the tickets. And he said, I brought them home. When they got home from school that day, he said, I handed him an envelope and said, here are your tickets to the next concert. He said, the begging days are over. He said, my daughters couldn't believe <laughs> what had happened. He said, they were so happy, terribly excited. So he gives them the envelope. Now he says, don't open the envelope until the evening of the concert when you get there. They said, okay. So comes the evening of the concert and his two daughters rush off to the concert. When they get there, they hand the usher the envelope. They open it up, right? And inside, they take out the tickets. And the usher says, follow me. Takes them down front. Tenth row, center. They can't believe. They say, hey, wait a minute, hold it, hold it. Let's take a look at those tickets again. <laughs> this can't be. He looks at the tickets, says, yes, it is. Just follow me. Tenth row, center. See, before then, all the tickets they begged for were way back up in the balcony right where you couldn't see. They couldn't believe it, 10th row center. He said uh, that night, a little late, just to see what would happen. He said, sure enough, the concert's over. Girls come home about midnight, bursting through the door. One lands in his lap. One's got her arms around his neck. They say, you have got to be probably the greatest father who ever lived. And he said, guess what those tickets cost me? Eight dollars. Eight dollars. You can't believe how for such small amounts you can change your whole life by changing your attitude, your procedure, your lifestyle, anticipating versus being reluctant 
figuring out ways to do it with joy instead of animosity. Lifestyle. If there's one thing to start working on in a heavy way after you leave here this weekend, is figuring ways, figuring ways to be unique. Remember, it's not the amount that counts. It's the plan that counts. Lifestyle, learning how to live. See, once you've put this all together, you will anticipate every day. You can't wait for the morning to come. You can't wait to get started. You can't wait to get at it. You can't wait to put your plan into action. You can't wait for all the little surprises you've got ready for some people. You can't wait to execute lifestyle and be more productive and progressive and learn and grow. And of all of the things we've covered here in these two days, this is one of the things that can affect your life so much that now it will be an investment in your progress. It'll be an investment in your language. You can't believe what it'll do in getting you a promotion on the job. All things will reflect what you do concerning how you live, lifestyle, and what you do about your family and yourself and your money and your substance and your time and your talent and your ability. Don't just live your life. Design it. Don't just exist. Grow. Change. Develop. Become unique. And it'll add a whole new dimension to your life. It's called lifestyle, part of personal development.